Today I'm going to show you a super easy method in Photoshop on how to create these horror newspaper alien sighting kind of images. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. Today's video will be super quick. Uh, basically, I discovered this effect on accident. I needed to come up with a couple of cover artwork proposals and I accidentally stumbled on this technique. So I figured out, let's show everyone how to create this because it's really easy and I really like how this looks. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into it. All right, so this is the unused cover proposal that you just saw. As you can see, there's really nothing to it. There's only a gradient map involved and a filter gallery effect. So let's create a new image. Gonna be completely honest guys, of course I couldn't really find a picture of a UFO. Uh, so I figured let's do this with a similar looking picture. This photo is by Pierre Chatel, I think. I found it on Unsplash, the link will be in the description down below. So right off the bat, let's unlock this layer and right click and convert it into a smart object. This way we can actually modify our filters and effects later if we need to. So make sure that your foreground color and your background color are black and white. Go to filter, filter gallery. And as you see, if we zoom out, basically the effect is nearly done. I'm gonna start out with nothing first. So the first thing you wanna do is go to texture grain and you wanna make the intensity like really high. The grain type can still be regular, the contrast should be around somewhere here, a little bit above half. So if you don't know, in the filter gallery in Photoshop, you can actually stack multiple layers on top of one another. So on the bottom here, let's click on this plus button and we'll change this one to torn edges, which basically does all of the magic for you, as you can see right here. Um, so the first thing that we wanna do, let's zoom in just a little bit. And you can see the grain is a little bit smooth i guess uh, and you can change it with the smoothness like if you lower this uh, the grain will be a lot finer as you can see right here in my example i left this all the way at one but of course like most of the settings in this video you can adjust them to your liking if you up the smoothness the grain looks a little bit larger uh, and this will also give you more gray values to work with later when we add color to this then of course we can change the contrast a little bit so i left the contrast fairly high so you get get those really hard edges here uh, in the middle i really like that and then in the image balance you basically need to change this and adjust this based on the image that you load in as you can see if we lower this with my image it gets a little bit too light maybe but something like this where you can still make out the UFO is actually fine, I think. And next you wanna add another effect to stack on top, which is another grain effect. Uh, this time you can just leave it around the default settings. Uh, as you can see, this just adds a little bit more grain into the white spots of your image. And as you can see, this already looks like a nice UFO picture. So the next thing that we're gonna do is add in a gradient map. And what the gradient map does, if you're not familiar, it basically maps all the darker colors to a certain color and then the lighter colors to another color. So if we click on the gradient map under the properties panel, let's edit this gradient and I'll show you what I mean. Of course, our image is now black and white, but if we click on the black color here in our gradient and we change that to red, that means that all of the darkest values of our image will be mapped to red. Same goes for white, but the cool thing about this gradient map is that you can actually add in multiple colors. You don't need to have two end values, you can actually add in as many as you like. For our first color, we're gonna do a really almost black, uh, dark red. Add in a little bit of color because it just uh, has a little bit more character than this, in my opinion. Then around here, around 30%-ish, uh, let's add in another color, a little bit lighter like this. And as you can see, this image now starts to turn brown a little bit. And around here, let's add a kind of like a desaturated red around like 80%, let's do a well, almost like a pinkish color, I guess. Maybe rotate a little bit towards orange. And of course you can leave it white if you want to. You can also just remove it. But I think like the, like the little ram between white and this like beige color is actually really, really nice. 
And if we zoom in here, uh, basically what happens is because all of this pixel detail with gray values in there because of the grain that we added in our filter, we can get these nice colors and it doesn't necessarily look black and white. And although the image kind of looks black and white, it has a little bit of color in here, giving it a little bit more character. Depending on what you want to use this for, I also really like the blue colors in this aesthetic. You can see right here, if I just change this with a U and saturation layer. A couple of notes here, this effect, as you saw, works really well if you have a lot of color value in your images. You will add contrast with the filter gallery, but if you have a lot of gradients in here, that basically works really well. I'm going to show you what I mean real quick. I'm going to go into the smart object that I've just made. I'm going to select the subject and mask it a little bit and I'm going to add a gradient layer. I'm going to invert the mask by pressing Ctrl or Command I on our keyboard. Uh, as I can see, the mask isn't really done well. I'm going to do this fairly quickly so you guys can see what I mean by this effect. So I basically made the background a little bit darker and if we go back into our original image, go to the torn edges, we can play a little bit more with the image balance and bring back those shadows a little bit better as you can see right here. So as long as you have a little bit of fading and gradients, those are the parts where your image will really excel like here at the bottom and in this case in the sky here and of course what you can also do is duplicate this layer and play around with the parts where you actually want to show your uh, effect so for example let's make the image balance a little bit higher here so now we, that we have this what we can do is add a mask to our top layer and then we are going to make a large soft brush and basically brush in wherever we want to leave a little bit of detail. And of course we can also add in a 50% grayish color and paint that in here. And this way you can basically uh, add in shadows and stuff in your image everywhere you want in order to create this cool alien siding effect in Adobe Photoshop. One final thought is if you want to uh, maybe make this grain a little bit more subtle, what I would do is select your whole image, convert that into a smart object, zoom in a little bit, and then just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Depending on how large your image is, you can add some blur in here. I think I'm going to put in mine with one pixel and Maybe you can also play around with the opacity of the blur here. So maybe we'll just lower the opacity to maybe 50%. And then we have our original version with the harsh grain together with the blurred version here. Maybe you don't really see it that good in the video, but it adds a little bit of realism, I guess. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I hope it was useful. If you want to get the Photoshop file for this because you're lazy, don't worry, I actually have a link to the PSD file in the description down below. That link leads to my Patreon channel where you can find the PSD files for this video, also the PSD files from all of my other videos. For just five bucks a month, you'll get access to all of the PSD files that I have so far, which is over a hundred at this point. If you're more interested in texture packs or vector shapes or 3D renders that you can use in your artworks, check out my web store, dreadlabs.net. If you have any questions regarding the tutorial, suggestions for new videos, or if you just want to share anything else with me, leave it down in the comments below. Also, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe on the channel if you've not done that already. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.